Hello and welcome to another of my chemistry videos. Today's video, the, object, the state standard and objective are listed here. The objective says that students will, upon completion of this lesson, this video, be able to do calculations using the relationship among the speed, wavelength, and frequency of electromagnetic radiation. So what we're talking about today is the properties of light. I'll start out with a de definition of electromagnetic radiation. And I've watered it down a bit to, to uh, make it seem a bit more simple. It's just a name that scientists give a bunch of types of radiation when they want to talk about them as a group. It could also be thought of as a way that energy travels. Now, if you look at this graphic that we have here, it shows the relationship between frequency and wavelength and even gives some examples of what might be comparable to those wavelengths, how long they are. Um, all of these, all this electromagnetic radiation we're going to talk about does come from the sun, among other sources. Um, but let's start out at, on the long end of the the, the uh, wavelengths here. We have really long wavelengths if they're in the order of, they're all measured in meters, and if they're in the order of 10 to the 6 meters, I mean, we're talking about measuring something like Mount Everest. Uh, as, as we get a little bit smaller, uh, we could, um, these are all radio waves in, in that range. If we get a little bit smaller, maybe we're talking about wavelengths that are only a meter long, well, that's comparable to measuring us, people, humans. Uh, someone who's really tall might measure two meters. Uh, those are all radio waves. We get into infrared. Uh, another name for infrared could be heat. Heat is infrared uh, radiation. Uh, but those are on the order of 10 to the negative 2 meters. In other words, measured in centimeters. And you could compare that to the width of a fingernail. Uh, we keep getting smaller. We get into visible light, which is actually a very narrow uh, section of the electromagnetic spectrum. And the, the artist has actually drawn it a little wider than what it really is. Um, we keep getting smaller. We start talking about ultraviolet wavelengths and in that range that's that's what makes you turn a nice pretty pink when you get out in the sun to give you sunburn. And those are measured in 10 to the negative 6 meters. In other words micrometers. Uh, another common application for these waves is microwave ovens. So you cook your food with. Okay, we keep getting smaller, uh, smaller wavelength, higher frequency, <clears throat> which incidentally means more energy. The further, the further you go to the right on this picture, the more energy we have. Well, anyway, we get into X-rays, and we know that those are those are powerful enough to penetrate our bodies, and you can. Uh, view bones and so forth with, with x-rays. Uh, if we measure something in 10 to the negative 12, we're talking about picometers. That could also be used to measure at the atomic level. It's often used to measure atomic radius, distance from the nucleus to the outside edge of the electron cloud on an atom. We keep getting smaller. We're into gamma rays. Uh, it might make you think of the Incredible Hulk gamma rays. Uh, but if we get down this small, now we're talking about measurements of the atomic nucleus. We're so small. Um, moving on, we've introduced a few terms here that we need to define. Wavelength, for example. Wavelength is the distance between two corresponding points on two consecutive waves. In other words, if I took, we've got a picture here. You could think of this as water and it would, it would help. Um, if you took the crest of one wave and then you went to the next wave and measured how far it is to the crest of that wave, that would be considered one wavelength. Now, you could also measure from the trough, the low point on one wave, to the trough, the low point on the next wave, or halfway down on each wave. It, it doesn't really matter what point you pick. As long as it's the exact same point on two waves right next to each other, you're good to go. So that's wavelength. Now let's talk about frequency. Frequency is the number of waves that pass by a point in a specific amount of time. Usually we're talking about one second. Uh, perhaps you've heard the term cycles per second or hertz. Not the car company, H-E-R-T-Z. Uh, 60 hertz is what comes out of your uh, wall out outlet here in, in the States. Um, 
So we have a, another image here, higher frequency means more waves go by per second. And obviously that's going to mean shorter wavelength. Now if we're talking about lower frequency, then we're talking about longer wavelengths, and so fewer of them go by per second. Okay, let's move on. Let's put all this stuff together. How does, how does this all fit together? Okay, any electromagnetic radiation, whether it be ultraviolet or gamma rays or what have you, all of them travel at the same speed, the speed of light, which is represented in an equation as the letter C. Uh, the speed of light in a vacuum, and for anything we're going to do with our calculations, is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. It's pretty fast. Okay, let's move on. Electromagnetic radiation, also known as energy, travels in waves. We've already talked about that. Lambda, this funny looking upside down Y, is the symbol used to represent wavelengths and equations. Wavelengths, lambda, they're measured in meters. So quite often we'll be given in a word problem nanometers or centimeters or what have you. You need to convert those to meters before you do your calculations. Okay, frequency, V, is used to represent frequency. It's measured in seconds or cycles per second. And as I mentioned just a minute ago, it's sometimes this is referred to as hertz. Cycles per second is the same as hertz. Um, as we do calculations, you may get tripped up on units and why doesn't this cancel and how can it equal hertz? It'll be just fine. Just don't worry about that. Hertz will work fine. Finally, we put it all together. We have C, speed of light, is equal to wavelength times frequency. That's what we'll have at the top of the next slide here. Same equation, all written out in words. The speed of light is equal to wavelength times frequency. So to calculate for V, actually this form of the equation, you're never really going to use it in that, that form. So why don't I write it this way for you? Because you always know what C is. So if you got speed of light and you want to find out frequency, you're going to divide by wavelength. And if you want to know the wavelength, you're going to take the speed of light divided by frequency. These are actually the two forms of this equation that you're going to be using. Okay, so this first one, we want to calculate for frequency. So obviously we'll be using this. And we have a wavelength of 700 nanometers. Now if we plug that in, remember what I said about it has to be in meters. Nano stands for 10 to the negative ninth meters. So we can just write it this way rather than moving that decimal all over the place. So speed of light divided by 700 times 10 to the negative ninth meters. Do some button pushing on a calculator and here's what you get for an answer. Okay, and again units are in hertz. If you look at this, meters cancel on both of them, you're left with seconds or cycles per second, which is the same as hertz. Okay, so if we want to calculate again for frequency, plug things in just like we did up here. Nano stands for 10 to the negative ninth. Watch out for those units. Do some button pushing on a calculator and you get 7.5 times 10 to the 14th hertz. Okay, now let's look at if we have this form of the equation. We're going to calculate for wavelength when we have a frequency of 2.2 times 10 to the 14th hertz. This time there's no mega or anything in front of this, no nano, so we can just plug things in just the way they are. Speed of light divided by the wavelength, excuse me, for divided by the frequency will give you our wavelength. We end up with meters. And if this trips you up, this hurts, think of this as being seconds. Seconds are both going to cancel out. You're left with only meters for units. So 1.36 times 10 to the negative 6 meters. Okay, now here this one's a little different. We have 1800 megahertz. Now watch out for these prefixes. Mega stands for 10 to the 6th. So when we enter this, 
we're going to have to have 1800 times 10 to the sixth hertz. Speed of light divided by that will give us 0.1667 meters. Okay, let's move on. For a long time, it was thought that light was a wave and that's all there was to it. Well, eventually we reached a point where light as waves was challenged by light as particles. And the guy who did that was Einstein. He was actually given the Nobel Prize for, for coming up with something called the photoelectric effect. Uh, when light shines on certain metals, the metal gives up electrons. But the thing is, the puzzle to this is that there's a minimum frequency that the light has to be or the whole thing doesn't work. And wave 30 alone couldn't count for this, account for it. It just didn't make sense if you followed wave theory. So we're going to have to introduce some new material here. Max Planck came along to help figure this out. He had quantum particles. In 1900, while he was studying the emission of electromagnetic energy from hot objects, he decided that there was not a continuous stream of energy such as waves. He thought that instead the energy was given off in little packets called quanta. He came up with the following relationship between a quantum of energy and the frequency of radiation. So energy was equal to Planck's constant times frequency. So here we still have the same equation. Energy is measured in joules and it's of a quantum of radiation, a little packet of radiation. H is a constant called Planck's constant and this never changes. 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds. Yes, those are weird units. Don't get hung up on those. V, again, same as last equation, is the frequency of the radiation in seconds. So a quantum of energy is the minimum amount of energy gained or lost by an atom. And if you think about the photoelectric effect that ties in, you need a certain amount of energy in order to kick an electron loose. If the frequency is lower, then frequency goes down, then the energy goes down, and there's not enough energy to remove those electrons. So here we have this equation. Again, we're going to do a little bit of calculating with it. So given a frequency of 3.55 times 10 to the 17th hertz, we're going to find the energy in joules. Well, this should be simple multiplication because if we're given frequency and we know Planck's constant, we simply multiply those together. So we have Planck's constant, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joules, joule seconds, times the frequency we're given, 3.55 times 10 to the 17th hertz, multiply them and we get 2.35 times 10 to the negative 16th joules. Okay, here we're given the energy of a photon and we need to find the frequency. Well, if we move these around, we're given energy, we know Planck's constant, we need to find frequency, we can simply divide the energy by Planck's constant, and that will give us our frequency. 5.64 times 10 to the 18th seconds. <clears throat> We're getting close to done here. Okay, just a couple of more things to tie it all together. 1905, we've got Einstein. He's back again. <clears throat> he took some of Planck's findings and his photoelectric effect and tried to put an end to this dilemma of light as a wave or light as a particle. And he came up with the idea that light has a dual wave particle nature. Light does have wave-like properties, and light is like a stream of particles and carries a quanta, or little packets of energy. He called these quanta photons. The previous equation was suddenly changed to the energy of a photon is equal to Planck's constant times frequency. <clears throat> so electromagnetic radiation is absorbed by matter only in whole numbers of photons. So in other words, we can't have half of a photon. For energy, electrons, 
to be knocked free of metal, the metal has to be hit with photons with a minimum amount of energy. This translates into photons of a certain minimum frequency. If you think back to E equals Planck's constant times frequency, that kind of makes sense. So different metals have atoms bound more or less tightly, so it may require higher or lower frequencies to break electrons free, depending on the type of metal. <clears throat> I don't think I'm going to bother talking you through this one. This is a review of what we just recently did. This is uh, the frequency of the wavelength, 632 nanometers. Set you up with something like this. And calculating, you end up with this. And the wavelength, and the frequency is 2400 megahertz. Equation here. Calculating, get an answer right there. Now this next slide, which is actually the last slide, we're going to combine these two equations to do some calculations. And you'll notice that the factor that ties these together both have frequency. They both have V. So if you need to find, for example, energy, you're going to, and you're given wavelength, you can see that you're going to have to use this equation to find frequency and then take frequency, plug it into the other equation for energy. Okay, so we're given a wavelength right here, 4.257 times 10 to the negative 7 centimeters. Remember, this must be in meters. You're going to find the energy. So first off, we start with this. Speed of light divided by our wavelength. We do our division, and we can plug the answer to this in, the frequency, right into here. We're going to multiply it times Planck's constant. Planck's constant times the frequency we just found by dividing here. We multiply these together and we get our answer. 4.67 times 10 to the negative 17th joules is our energy. If the energy of a photon, moving on to the next equation, is equal to 2.35 times 10 to the negative negative 16th joules, what is the wavelength of the photon? So here we're starting with energy, and we know Planck's constant. So we do some division, we can find our frequency. Remember, again, frequency is the connection between these two equations. Almost without fail, you're going to be finding frequency first. So we do our division. Energy divided by Planck's constant gives us frequency. Now we're going to plug frequency in and divide the speed of light by the frequency that we find. Another division problem. We do this division and we will have our wavelength. Speed of light divided by frequency gives us wavelength. And there's our answer. Well, I hope this helps you to understand these concepts and that's it for this video. See you next time.